Be careful. The further in time you get, the more likely you are to become lost. Your life shall cease. High and low doesn't matter. This is the path. What if your smallest decision would affect everything? The Desnian butterfly effect is where a small change in one state of a nonlinear system can result in large differences in another state. Perhaps even disasters. Tonight, the adventurers make a dangerous journey to Brasterwork seeking answers. The changes they make could lead to catastrophic endings. Tread lightly. This is the path. Oh, wow. Awesome. I just, I love it so much. Deanna. Woo! Yay! That, that's always amazing. goosebumps. Always that's goosebumps. That's our in house, Deanna. It's so funny. We, we had recorded for the first time in like a month. And I just started talking, and both Spencer and I were like, that's not the right voice. That's not right. <laughs> <laughs> Try again, Deanna. <laughs> you know, it's, we, could, we could just, you know, go weekly live on Twitch if we had a crew of 30 people. I, we, let's go <laughs> hire. <laughs> let's do it. Let's hire a crew. Oh, my God. Wait a minute. We have somebody else here tonight. Hey, Brett, who's with us? Oh, uh, Jean Simonet. Wow! Oh, that's oh, for Jean, Jean. That's <laughs> Brett. Is here. Yeah. <laughs> right, yay! Changing dice forever. Thank you for yeah. that, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Explain why Jean is so. Not only is a great role player, by the way. Oh my God! This, I am expecting a ton, <laughs> and so should you. No pressure, <laughs> but no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> but why is Jean so extremely special to the loaded dice rollers? To little dice rollers or just yes. uh, RPG in general? Well, I mean, come on. We, you know, we're being selfish. What about us? Oh, yeah, does. Are you kidding me? Yeah, just having these awesome dice that he created, actually, that'll be coming out probably, hopefully, in the, by the springtime, we're hoping, right? Well, what's uh, we the name di- of the dice? What's the oh, name pixel of the dice. dice. Yeah, oh, pixels. my God. I've heard. Oh, you are saying? So we, get, we get so loaded when we play. We need well, dice Sean to light up so we can read them. Oh <laughs> but no, God. it's going to be awesome. I can't wait. We have many wait. backers. Many backers oh, yes. here. Many. Many and fans. In our circle of love. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yes, it was very, very unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Sean, I have to be honest. I've only bought one set of your dice. I'm sorry. If I wasn't moving into a very expensive house right now, <laughs> I might have bought more. There's somebody in the group that bought like, how many dice were bought in the group? I got five sets plus five dice. I got the highest. Oh my god! Wow. Yeah. Wow. I'm excited. Rules, God. They have a lot yeah. of friends. A lot of, yeah. Thank you so much. My Christmas I, uh, shopping is done. So a lot of yeah, exactly. Getting, yeah. You know, and if you guys have a John, what's your YouTube channel? I have a personal one that has a, some stuff about the dice, uh, which would be Jean Simonet probably. But yeah, Pixels don't have a YouTube channel yet. Yeah, it's easy to find if you just do yeah. your last name, and it's it's one E and T after si- Simon, basically for. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Americans. Yes. Americans. <laughs> Simon Americans. E.T. Ooh. Uh, and, uh, but yeah, for, for information on it, the, the, the best is the, the website. There's a bunch of videos and things. Some, if people don't, don't know what pixels are. Going in your catalog of videos is fascinating, man. Watching you <laughs> with yeah. your mm-hmm. software development. I mean, this is years of progress. You're like a polymath. <laughs> you know, you're, you're like this Renaissance guy. You do, you do it all. Yeah, I, I was for the longest doing video games in like large studios, but also you know, sort of as a an independent developer kind of Bethesda. thing. Bethesda. Yeah, Bethesda. Bethesda. Yeah, 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 Bethesda. Yeah, so <laughs> no. yeah, Skyrim was the last game that I wow. uh, that I finished. <laughs> with Bethesda. Yeah. It's a small. Game. The small game. Yeah, small you, wanna, you know, it's me and and uh, not a hundred people, but mostly me. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I did work a little bit on Fallout 4. Oh! Was, yeah. <laughs> uh, those are our two favorites, by the way. Oh. Uh, dude, I, I listen to Streets of Right One, White Run just because. At there times. you go. Yeah, thank you. Skyrim is one of the most like 
in recent years, one of the more intimate game experiences that I've had. Oh, for sure. And I still haven't gotten to level 80 yet. Yep. So, okay, so <laughs> if I if I may share a, a, a short story about Skyrim. You may. I was in, you know, as a, a software developer in the AI sort of, you know, uh, gameplay systems. And so what I was spending most of my time working on is like animation and pathfinding, like making sure NPCs go where they're supposed to and they don't look too stupid uh, doing it. And so, you know, that's kind of like not super exciting when you talk about the game. Like, hey, yeah, did you ever look at, you know, uh, look at an NPC, you know, uh, and and think to yourself, wow, this this NPC is not running into a wall right now. That's amazing. Right? <laughs> mm -hmm. that, that kind of By thing. By the way, right? our ratings just went up, so everybody's interested <laughs> in, in your NPC talk. So keep it and, up. Uh, and that's huge, uh, by the way, because you'll notice it. The thing is, we might not appreciate it when it's not happening, but when it correct. is happening, you notice exactly. it right away. Like, look at this guy. Yeah. Like, he's e. walking right into his door. E.T.'s yeah, video game yeah, with yeah. Atari. Yeah. Uh, but for uh, Skyrim, one of the things I really wanted to do, and I ended up doing sort of as a side, <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry, uh, as a side thing, was little critters, like the little butterflies that you can collect and stuff. And so I have gotten like so much more love for those that I spent, you know, like oh. this amount of time on than like what I spent, you know, most of my, you know, my work there is kind of uh, That's hilarious. That's funny. Butterfly but yeah, 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 yeah. The, the little butterflies <laughs> and then the little fish that you could grab and stuff. Yeah, yeah. blue butterfly uh, wings are an important uh, chemical ingredient <laughs> in yeah, Skyrim, exactly. so those are appreciated. <laughs> yeah. So I, I appreciate like your mushrooms. endeavors and... <laughs> Fishing is a good way to get up certain skills and attributes. Sure. Well, you, you, always appreci you always appreciate when a game has those like little like nuances and details that make it feel yeah. so much more like what you could do in real life as opposed to just like there's an algorithm and you follow the story and you have choice A, B, or C, but you also can yep. go and do your little nonsense because that's what oh. we do in life. We have our nonsense. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, are you yeah, talking about loaded dice rollers? Perfectly said. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that's, that's us. No, I got to be honest. Skyrim, I'm completely enthralled. Like, Thank you. Thank failed you. the charm I, uh... spell. My will save sucked. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like that, Fallout 4. Oh my God. Oh, like, those are one two of my, my favorite favorites. ever. Yeah. And, and we had Bioshock's uh, little sister on, by the way, oh my God. Juliet Landau. And she was an amazing, amazing character. And I, you know, I loved Bioshock one and two was kind of creepy, but nowhere mm -hmm. near, nowhere near your game. <laughs> a little bit. Nowhere near. <laughs> Sorry, Rival Julia. game studio, Spencer. We don't talk about that. Sorry, Julia. We don't talk about oh. well, if you, if you want to talk about the... that, I used to work for <laughs> Vivendi, Vivendi games, which oh was my God, Vivendi games. Yeah. yeah. And we did Spiral Crash Bandicoot. Uh -huh. And then we did. Wow. Spencer's yeah, yeah. a thousand years old. I know. <laughs> we did Ghostbusters. <laughs> Worked on Miss Pac Man. Oh, it was amazing. Terrible. Yeah. No, we did, old are you, uh, like 75, Spence? What's going on? We did King's Quest. <laughs> uh, Crash Bandicoot. Crash just came out with a new game. Spyro's coming out. <laughs> Atari I mean, honestly, one. If you, if, you, if you did work on King's Quest, I did, I'd give you mad respect. <laughs> oh, so. for sure. Great. So I, worked on Slay. I worked on Slay. It, it was a PC game in the beginning. It's, a, it's don't play it. Okay. Here we, uh, John, this is great. I'm so happy you're here. And we have this amazing cold open that um, should explain everything. And if it doesn't, it's the editor's fault. And we'd like to call him up and bash him. If that, if, if you would do that for us, you can just like, Hey, you, you missed some things in your cold open. Would you do that for us this week? I have no problem. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll put that. on my thickest French accent. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, well, there you go. Ah, but this is open. Yeah. This is nothing. Right. Johnny so, might enjoy that, actually, so just be careful. In there. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I'm really glad at this moment that I didn't give Anastasia a French accent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine? Imagine the whole, Jean yeah. would be judging you so hard. I know. All game oh, long. <laughs> so disappointed, yeah. So judgmental. Here we go, gang. Here's the cold open. We love playing with somebody from Astral. Wasn't this fun? Yeah, I, I'm amazing. Inst I was instantly, pretty much instantly in half health almost, so. <laughs> Welcome to Season 3, Episode 21. Oh my god, I guess we're with pros. That's amazing. Great job, everybody. That was, that was awesome. It all began with young Pathfinders Luna and Ren. You and Mora have been there for Luna and I 
and Anastasia, they were there for us after all that happened. But their home was destroyed by drow, looking for a specific item. Tell me where my abscess is. One of their childhood friends surprisingly stayed alive. I've been in, in the dark lands. We've been dealing with the drow. And dedicated her life to take revenge on the drow. Oh, awesome. I chop off her fucking head. Yeah! yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Now, an item that was given to Ren by his master. You know what that is? This thing is dangerous. And it's gotta be destroyed. You are not gonna destroy it. This is my path. Is becoming increasingly dangerous. Ren? Uh, well, I'm not really Ren right now, if that's what you call the kid. Who are you? It seems the item is causing another soul to occupy Ren's body. Ren's hiding behind the craze, making sure he's not seen, and he pulls out his bag of holding. What is this thing in my hand? A grumpy old wizard with great powers. I want you out and you will not take this from me. That don't work all the time. I can't be trusted. You have to restrain me. Or is there something else going on? Speaking of paths, this is where our paths is taking us. Maybe not so much Ren since he's tied up and bound against his wishes, but for the rest of us, that's where we're headed. Whatever's happening, Anastasia believes the item needs to be thrown into a sphere where nothing exists and destroys anything entering it. So we're trying to hunt down a void sphere. And I heard there's one in Chiliax. Basil work, I think is the place to go. One of these spheres has been found by Anastasia's guild, the Brotherhood of Silence. Where are you headed? Is this boat headed to Chiliax? More at what point should I draw my sword and attack the devil at the boat? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, see, Theros, funny thing about that, he is evil, but I don't know if he's evil, evil, or just, oh, evil. What's happening? I'll tell you about what's happening. <laughs> so listen, we've made the excellent decision to invade a land ruled by devils. Yes, what? that's right. That's our next door neighbors, the horrible Chalaxians. <laughs> so these not halflings, uh, that one right there, uh, the captain, he apparently, he apparently has a, uh, an ongoing trade agreement with these devil worshippers. So we're going to take advantage of that to break in, to go and find a void sphere, I think was the name that Anastasia used, to throw that thing that's driving Ren crazy into it. What do you mean throw what I have into it? Wait a second, I, I don't feel comfortable being tied up anymore. And so you guys have made it to Basel work. And the only thing to do is have one diplomatic conversation you there's no need to check our credentials you can let us right in that was a natural 20. <gasps> oh yeah. wow. yeah. what the hell oh, buddy oh, critical oh, hit hey. oh, nice oh with your actual dungeon box <laughs> yeah welcome to tonight's adventure you're wondering like wow this is chelix like maybe it's not so bad jonathan honestly the warm no, it's terrible. Gotten... <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> It is terrible. God. It's terrible, Jonathan. Awesome. Theros, you told him about the void sphere and that we were gonna throw it in? That seemed like the right thing to do. No, he wasn't supposed to know. <laughs> well, no one told me that part. Oh. <laughs> Listen, do you understand where we are right now? I want to kill everything that's in here. So why don't we throw just everything to the void sphere and we'll sort, we'll let the void sphere sort it all out. How about that? <laughs> do we have to throw Mora in as well? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Great job, you guys. Awesome. John, we're not expecting much, but all that happened in one episode. I mean, wow. All right. So we find ourselves inside Cheliax. And Cheliax is a nation, a devil nation run by the House Thrun currently. And uh, the borders where you are are subjected to their delineation because of this mountain range. So really some things in the mountain range are sort of, uh, we don't know if it's devil nation or not. Brassel work is one of these areas. that's sort of on the cusp. It's not really dealt with because it's not that important. It's a gnome settlement. It's rather large, all gnomes, some chaotic, some evil, uh, <laughs> you know, some good maybe. And so we find ourselves at Brasswork, and last known, we entered the gates with a nat 20 from John Irons of Astral, 
tabletop, virtual tabletop, which is great, and got you guys in because he was your guide. And so you enter the main gates. There's another main gate because it's a gnome settlement, and gnomes build things, and that's what they're known for. And you yell up to the top gnome. Kind sir, could you uh, please let us in? Thanks. Anastasia, how did you get here so fast? I left Jack on the ship. He's all jacked up, but you guys haven't been walking very fast. I caught up to you pretty quick. I don't know what you've been doing. <laughs> Say that again. Uh -huh. The one of the not halfling at the previous gate. So we <laughs> figure that <laughs> the same rules apply here. So please not halflings open the gate so we can go in and complete <laughs> our trade uh, I, 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 mi I, uh, mission. I look at the rest and I say, how about we call them gnomes since we're trying to win their favor? Oh, I'm sorry. Come on in. See, they like not halfling. I'm it's not sure about that. probably a compliment to them. <laughs> not sure about that. The gates open and, and you enter and right inside you see the, the sort of settlement hustler. His name is Julian and he's, he's amazing. Julian has bright colors, his hair is lit up. You've never seen anything like this. He looks like he knows every what's going on because he has his book out and it's almost like you booked the tour with him. So you come into the gates and he is right there with his other trusted friend. Grab his besticle. <laughs> Let's talk to that not happening. He's got a book. He seems to know everything that's going on around here. Well, hi, hello. Travelers, uh, welcome to uh, Brassel Works. Uh, what brings you here? Can I? How can I be of service? Could I interest you in uh, a tour of the local points of interest? Maybe that would be amazing. What, what's your name, kind sir? Oh, my name is Julian Dreamcloud. I am the uh, chief entertainer and. <laughs> I have with me my assistant, Gravis. Gravis, where are you? Gravis, come here. <laughs> you're such a kidder, Julian. I know you're yeah. assistant. What are you thinking you're going to be showing us here, Mr. Julian? Jean, make a diplomacy roll on these characters. You are going to roll a d20, and your diplomacy is plus two. Oh, plus two. <laughs> sounds like a terrible modifier. Yeah, it's still a 17. <laughs> oh, dang. <laughs> what he says, you guys kind of, uh, you, you believe him. You're like, okay. It depends uh, what your what your interests are. We, if we are looking for uh, certain items, maybe uh, I can uh, show you some of the best shops around. Uh, I'm looking for looking books through... related to devils and maybe how you might dispatch them. <laughs> I assume that you have volumes upon volumes of that and here in this lovely area of Cheliax. Uh, that is oddly specific. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it is true. Uh, we we are in, uh, in the uh, Cheliax nation, but as you know, uh, Basil works, you know, we're, we're kind of left alone and, and you know, we're not really um, into, um, you know, worshiping devils here. Well, how uh, about a, you got a store with some rare items? Oh, that's that's that is what we specialize uh, in here at, at Basil Basil Works. We should take you to the tea shop. Uh, what a tea what? shop? What time? Yeah, you, what is you it? Hear, you hear uh, the gnome up up <laughs> top? He yells at you. You should take him to the tea shop. I'm not here for tea, <laughs> kind sir. <laughs> Look, we're looking for things more of a spherical nature. Can you just show us pointers in the direction of any spherical, circular type of objects? Yes, we have uh, many clockwork uh, shops. If you're interested in uh, round uh, items, look, uh, you're not picking up what I'm laying down here. I'm looking for a sphere that basically annihilates Theros, existence. Theros, 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 too much, too much, too soon. Well, I think we should just kind of cut to the chase. I mean, the man's got a book. He obviously knows what's going on. And Jonathan, can you, can you make a D20 roll for a religion check for me? I would be happy to. Religion? Yeah. That's up my that's up we'll my alley. Okay. Uh that's a ten all in. Okay. That's Ends that's right good enough. You actually know that gnomes usually worship a god called Bri. 
but the thing about Bri is Bri loves oil and loves shiny things. So if you can placate a gnome, you know it's with bribing them with oil or shiny things. And it doesn't, it, and gold is not necessarily that shiny thing. Okay, who has this oiliest face here? You're all teenagers. <laughs> Speak for yourself, madam. Ren goes and rubs his face next to Julian's face. <laughs> That's Julian. disgusting. That just is, like, just like yeah, this. Like, like, steps away. Oh, oh, oh wait, I've got something. Oh, like a I've cat? Got something. Look, Ren, oh Ren, I was joking. I was joking. Ren, come here. <laughs> listen. Oh, okay. Listen, you, listen, Mr. Dream Cloud, you and your people, you clockwork lovers like the shinies, what about this? And I'll take out the hill giant <laughs> necklace that I liberated Ooh. from the last one. Oh, wow. That looks pretty shiny to me. Wow. Put some oil on it too. Rub it on Ren's face. Yes, yeah, so imagine what this would look like with some oil. And I, yeah, rub it on Ren's cheek. Look at that. <laughs> what a wow, spot. just right up. <laughs> Theros. Julia, Julian picks up the thing and like, <laughs> Kitty. What is this? This thing with oil, like, and I, I turn around and grab it, like, what do you think? Does this look like a lot of money? Like, is this is this worth a lot? Look, you can wear that as a belt. It's from a hill giant. <laughs> it's yeah. I don't know. I I mean I haven't seen too many hill giants. Julian, did I ever hear them say they're looking for a couple spherical objects? I did say that. Yes, actually, yeah. one yeah. specific <laughs> spherical object. Well, yes. I have two of them if you want to see them. All right, go ahead and lead oh, no, it down. No, oh, no, Theros, Theros, Theros. But it sounds like exactly what we want to see. Theros. He's got two of them. Do you want to see his, you want to see his balls? I'm sorry? You want to see his balls? Would you like to see my balls? No. Uh, is that gnome for void sphere? Yeah. I don't think void so. Void sphere. A void hmm. sphere. Oh, that's very interesting. What, um... What, what could you possibly need a void sphere for? Hold on, I need to clarify. Are we talking about the same thing? Are your balls the <laughs> void sphere? <laughs> I don't know what a void sphere is. We don't want to see any of those. Thank you. <laughs> Good. I haven't forgotten what you said about my item. And you're not going to get it. Now, if we're here to do something different, I would say, Theros, I need to borrow some gold, if you don't mind. I kind of have to do a couple things. I'll pay you back. I know Ren, it's an ask. Ren, what do you need the gold for? Because we kind of just had you tied up and let you go. So I'm not sure we're letting you go and buy things on your own. I've, you know, I've been talking to, you know, and, yeah. uh, I'm, we're trying to get good with each other, and uh, there's. Uh, he asked for a favor. I said that I would, I would, I would help. So, this is very cryptic. How much gold is it going to require for you to talk to this, or do whatever it is this other individual that you're talking about needs? You know, only five hundred gold. Oh, <laughs> not well, very you're much. out of luck uh, there, my friend, because that's more than I even have. And I'm well, not sure uh, you're going to buy anything without telling us what it is. Come on, Anastasia. No, come on, I would, the, yeah. the answer is no. no. Well, you're not my mom, all right? You, well, you... I'm a hell of a lot stronger than you, and I grab his arm. Okay, stop, that hurts. It can I'm hurt starting to like this one. She's feisty. Anastasia, this, this is important. And, and Theros, I know you have the, I know you have the gold. Uh, Julian? Take us to where you said we were going. We're ready to leave. Thank you. <laughs> right out the door. All right. Julian. Julian, I think I think we can help them for a price. You guys are oh, looking for something, right? Yes, and not your balls. I think my balls can help. <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> yeah. Are his balls what we're looking for, or are they not what they look? I mean, I, I'm not sure. There's a lot of talk about spheres and balls. Look, Ren. In the meantime, for whatever incredibly crazy schizophrenic episode you're having, you can, these not halflings don't want this hill giant necklace and it's about the price that you're looking for. So here, you can take the necklace, enjoy it. Do whatever you're going to do with it. The roundabout retail value would be about 500 gold pieces. Julian, do you, do you have a, a, a pawn shop or, or a place I can take take this to, to get a better appraisal? Maybe we can start there. Absolutely, we have many pawn shops here uh, in the city. Uh, so what you need to do is you, know, you go down that street to the left, and then you take two turns to the right, 
then you go up the stairs up over the escalator then i think if they haven't changed it you probably need to go around the the house that's in construction still but if you don't you know what maybe uh i could take you there I, uh, yeah, of course you. my time is very very valuable uh and as you know uh Grabus and i were we're just in the middle of some very important research as you can see by this book that i'm holding yes why don't you tell us more about that book don't worry about the book for now yes if you could take us there that would be great thank you um so he escorts you down the street and and he does he finds a shop and he says you know go in and jean there's some kind of code that you say to the the keep that you know, suggests a better price. What what is that code? It's Ooh, always sunny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's always it sunny. Oh, yeah, God, it's like, always before sunny. Before it isn't. Before it isn't. <laughs> and Ren, you go into the shop and you do meet an interesting character. And Julian, he notices uh, Theros is following him, and you don't want to lose a group because you know that there's some money to be made in the group. I want to grab Theros's arm really and, and say, Theros. You got to keep a close eye on him, right? We just had him tied up. You can't let him get away with, with anything. Listen, uh, for, in general, just so you understand, because you're kind of coming late to this whole party, my <laughs> whole reason is to keep an eye on your two friends here. You know, while you are gone and off in the dark lands and absconding with who knows what and doing who knows what and assaulting people while they urinate in the forest, <laughs> I was here keeping an eye on your friends. So don't you worry about that. Ren and Luna are my charges, as far as I'm concerned. And I am here, with Iomide's blessing, to keep these two safe. And I will find their path with them. Well, then I will have your head if you let him do anything. Okay, and I turn back. All right, so Tom, while you're in there, please roll I a think D20. I'm in love. Roll a, D- <laughs> roll a D20 for me, Tom. Roll a D20. Uh, nat, uh, I, I want to show nat you. Nat 20? Nat 20. And nat 20. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you actually get double the value. But I don't want to roll it right now. I don't feel it later. You've never seen anything like it, Lightsworn. Actually, you, you think that Ren should probably begin negotiating any sale that you ever have in the future <laughs> indefinitely, always. And so he gets actually double the price. So you t- you turn around and you give him back his 500 gold pieces that you you borrowed from him, and you keep 500. There, is your, there you go. Thank you, oh, you so much. Oh, you liquidated it? Wow, this is great. That's some excellent money laundering there. You are a true friend. I can never repay you. I know I just did repay you, but I can never repay you. Thank you. Excellent. And then back to Anastasia and Jean and Brett. Brett, you're more interested in this conversation because you realize you can make some gold off of this. Even though uh, gnomes aren't that greedy, you might be that greedy. He's also a little bored. Hey, Julian, tell him what I do. That's a very uh, long conversation. And you sure you want me to share everything with them? <laughs> oh, I'd love um, to hear it. Hear all of it. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, so um, Gravis and I, we're sort of uh, what you might call um, entertainers. We find what people enjoy and we make sure that they get what they enjoy. That often involves some special work. And uh, my friend Grabus here sort of specializes in the special work. Uh, Julian, you're such a kidder. You were not gigolos. Listen, I'm a fortune teller. (laughs) I can help you guys out. But it's going to cost a price. Oh, wow. Well, I'm pretty much willing to pay whatever you need if we can get what we want. But I'm not necessarily someone you want to uh, pull one over on. You know right, what Brent, I mean? Roll a d20 for me. Okay. Let's see how good your involvement She's is. She's not somewhere. lying. She'll attack you while your pants are dying. <laughs> yeah, she will. True. I rolled an 11 over my plus is. So you, you believe him, by the way, Vienna. And... He's pretty good at convincing you that he's a fortune teller. Have your friends come into my shop when you're ready and bring something valuable. Right, Julian? Absolutely, yes. This, uh, <laughs> like I said, Grubbis' services are very, very special. Yeah. Does he convince me enough that I don't have any reason to threaten him? There's, or... no, there's no reason to doubt him. Let's just put it that way. Okay. Theros, you, let's come back to you and Ren. So you're in the shop. Ren, you succeed at your thing. What do you tell Theros? Theros, before we go back, Anastasia's kind of scaring me a little bit with just (laughs) 
some of the things that she said and I don't understand. So maybe maybe you can you can help me and we can get a couple of items that you know he wants to get. Who's he? Right? You know him. No, I don't. Um <laughs> The one that I talked to, you, me? No, no uh, well, hold on. There is shop shop owner. Can I have your attention for a second? Uh, he, he hobbles over. Very old gnome, hobbles over. Yes. What, what kind of trouble can I get you out of? Oh, well, maybe get me in. I'm looking for a couple of items. What What are you looking for? I'm looking for a crystal, but it, it's it's. A crystal that has to Let's be... Let's see what we have here. A special crystals. crystal. And he, just, he opens up a whole drawer and he grabs a bunch of crystals out. And he, he, uh, what, what, what type of crystal? Just just a shiny one? One, one? What do you have for 100 this one's gold shiny. pieces? What do you have for 100 gold pieces? Something, that's, something that feels worthy, uh, I guess, would be the... This one is very shiny. He's got an optic lens. He pulls it out and has you look at it. Very shiny. Yeah, look at it. This one's this, a little dollar. This one's discolored. Little. How much is this one right here? Shiny. This stack. looks it's important. About, this looks. Uh, 150. 150. Uh, how about 100? Um, Maybe. Okay. 100. Oh. <laughs> there, you're watching so, this. You are a master <laughs> negotiator, my friend. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you're, I, you're so nice. You're so nice. Thank you. And and, and you know while we're at it, you, I uh, you only the, know you know it's worth only a hundred. <laughs> do you have potions here by any chance? Uh, uh, healing potions? Yes. potions We've, maybe. Evil splendor. We have no, uh, owl. Yeah. What? What is no, it? Not, nothing Heal. about owls. No. No. A healing potion, uh, specifically like a greater healing potion. Greater. I'm gonna have to go in the bag and get that. I don't like that. If you if you could check, that would be amazing. He he comes. He hobbles back out and he goes. 400 for greater healing. 400, huh? That's, it looks like that's just all I have left. Uh, and then I have nothing. Maybe 375? 390. 382? 389. How about 385? Fine, we'll... fine. I'm bored. Okay, oh, here. Take it. You're, thank you so much. Unbelievable. Thank Two for two. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know where maybe a, a local mage is? Someone that, you know, with a, a wizard power, someone... What my friend's trying to ask is, do you know anybody with a void sphere around here? <laughs> no, a void sphere? Eros, I don't, I don't even know I'm why you're sure talking that about the, that. I, mean, I, I do know a, there is a great mage in town. Um, my daughter will take you to him in this, this small little gnome. <laughs> she's very young. She comes out, how can I help you? And she's... Oh, uh, that is he, the smallest not halfling I've ever seen. Uh, they want to see a mage, and but you should only take one of them, daughter. You know how the mage is. He's very particular with his audience. And so she says, she she nods to that. And she says, okay, only one of you. I'm the one to go, little one. Uh, okay, this you. way. Yeah, for sure. Take my mentally unstable friend. I'll report back to the rest of the group and let them know where he's gone off to. <laughs> she, she takes you Girls, outside. Thank you. Just, just make sure Anastasia knows I'm not up to anything. And she'll be fine. She'll believe you. Not sure about that. All right, I make my way back. Anastasia, just a heads up. <laughs> there, uh, Ren went off on his own to go see a great mage uh, for reasons I can't really explain. He was acting very cagey. I pull my dagger on Theros's throat. Well, this seems unnecessary. Where did he go? Went to the great mage. I just told you that with a tiny hat not halfling. He's going to the mad mage? Julian, what are they thinking? No, I mean, the last time anyone went to the Mad Mage, it was, well, say, it, let's just say it took a long time, right? They never came back the same. I, exactly, I know. I mean, I was I was talking to uh, Cyrix over there the other day about it, and it's yeah. like, maybe they should, maybe they need help. Hmm. Yeah, need I'm help. thinking maybe you should take us to them. Thanks, Theros, for doing absolutely nothing you said you were going to do. <laughs> Gravis pulls out the crystal ball. If you guys want to know any fortunes, my balls can show you the way. Anastasia takes a deep breath to roll over that comet. <laughs> she says, can it get us to the mage to get my friend? Oh, certainly. I can I can find anything. Those are some impressive balls. 
Theros. <laughs> no one cares right now. You go deep within brassel work. Anastasia punches Theros really hard in the arm. Ah, that's jokes on you. I'm wearing plate mail. Uh, I gave you one job. And you guys thought gnomes argued. Wow. And so you make it, you make it into your fortune telling house. Pull out the crystal ball and Julian, you sit down. And Theros, you're you're amazed by this ball. It's it's quite glowy. It's two balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gav is, is two balls. These and are the glowiest balls I've ever seen. Anastasia is not amused by the balls. <laughs> not impressed by your balls. No. Grabus asks you, I, I got to tell you something, guys. The power of my crystals only activates as long as I'm fully connected to my ancestors of the first world. And unfortunately, as of late, I've been bleaching. That sounds terrifying and gross. Yeah. Julian, it's tell a, him what gnome bleaching is. The story is very complicated, and I'm not going to bore you with it, but um, what Gravis is, is suffering from is what you could call boredom, really. Um, <laughs> Why wouldn't you just call it gnome boredom, then, instead of gnome bleaching? Your, your life isn't as colorful as it should be. We got it. Okay. Well, the, it does, in fact, like physically change our, our appearance. Uh, and it, like what, and your hair falls out? Our skin and our <laughs> hair, they all sort of uh, fade. If it's not treated with a uh, strong injection of adventure and excitement, it could get pretty, pretty bad. How about we get you unbleached and we read your balls? And now then, you're talking. <laughs> Anastasia takes a moment and realizes what she said and she's, she swallows and he goes, yep, yep. Okay. I like, like these people, the Julian. That's the most ridiculous malady I've ever heard in my entire life. I mean, it just sounds something so specific. It really makes me not want to ever be a not halfling. I'm sorry. It's just, it's just ridiculous that that could happen to you. I mean, how do you feel about that? Well, your friend is right. It's not going to take much. You, you got to entertain me. Something to liven some color back in me, you know? Uh, something original maybe I haven't experienced yet. I don't know if any of you can sing or tell a good story or anything. Uh, anything will do. Oh, Theros to go can tell first. you about being yeah. peed on. What? I don't like that story. That story is not appropriate for children. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. Please tell us. Yeah. For a star, he's going to get a star on this one. <laughs> Once upon a time, there was a brave paladin who was standing guard at the entrance of a forgotten place while his friends looked for a forgotten friend. Yeah, sure. And, and at some point, this brave paladin needed to relieve himself. And that's what the forest is there for. <laughs> because it, if you can't pee in a forest, where can you pee? And then of course, unbeknownst to this brave noble paladin, the friend of the friends showed up and decided to accost him while his long sword was on display for everyone to view. Long sword, I think you're, I think you're exaggerating. Is this bit. your story, madam? Sorry, I'll let you finish. He fought as bravely as he could, slashing and falling and spraying everywhere possible <laughs> but eventually the brigands got the best of him uh. and he was forced and put over a fire but do you know what my friends why because the fire within him burned so strong and he had the light of the great iomidae to guide his path he did not burn not even little theros <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> end your story is so great, Jonathan. Roll, please roll two d20s and take the higher and add it to your diplomacy check. That's amazing. <laughs> we're, we're borrowing from uh, E5 right now. And add it to the advantage. Okay, all right, hang on a second. Giving him an advantage. Yep. That was amazing. That was amazing. Thank you, thank you. You got to start for that, by the way. Oh, 15 plus 9. A wow, 24. You guys, you guys feel some hair like tingle with color. <laughs> yeah, it's just like you see this white streaks go pure yellow, and he's like, Whoosh. "Now Whoa. that was impressive." <laughs> I never that heard that amazing. before. Is Did a pee get in your mouth? <laughs> oh, Did it get in your mouth? Uh, I thought that was the story. Oh no, I didn't tell that part. Oh, um, I was only. Oh, maybe that'll, that'll be the next story. Okay, I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm actually, I'm really impressed with these colorful, it really actually did something. Well, I got the color quickly. What's your name? It's the the man that's I think was pissed on or, or his, his dog didn't get inflamed. Listen, uh, we hadn't told that part of the story. There was oh. urination involved, but not. we don't need to go any further than what I explained. My name is Theros Lightsworn of okay, the Lightsworn Theros. family. 
If you want to hear the rest and hear about him being peed on, let me know. You got it. Grab around my crystals. Grab, grab, give me your hands, Theros, and repeat after me. I'm grabbing your tiny hand, yes. Excellent. <laughs> Piggitus, Figitus, Bumpkin Stalls. Piggitus, Figitus, Bumpkin Stalls. Fortune Spirits, come in my balls. Fortune Spirits, come in my balls. I look over at, uh, I look at Lilbert and Julian and just raise one eyebrow like, and, and Julian is completely straight faced, like he's seen this a thousand times before. Just that's part of the ritual. You have summoned the spirit of the Grand Mage of Telemos to reconcile your mind's queries. I can tell you have traveled far and long to receive my important message. Please give a generous offering. An offering a summoned spirit can actually use imbeciles. Something like. And you wish me to life again so I can rule the devil nation once again. Perhaps you can sacrifice one in your party. Your leader. <laughs> he had me up until sacrifice. <laughs> and you also notice, too, there's two spheres, right? He only came up in one sphere that was kind of tinted uh, like red. Is that the mage that Ren is with? <laughs> I have no idea who that is. But how do you like your fortune? Julian, what do you think? Did they get a good one this time? It was, I mean, that was really cool, honestly. <laughs> does, does it look to you like the, the the sphere is a little too warm to be used right now? You don't seem very phased about creepy guy in the orb. I mean, you know, your your fortune is your fortune, whatever. What is it, you know, follow it, don't follow it. You know, it sounds kind of cool and interesting. You could kill someone. It'd be fun. What, you know, we're here talking about the sphere. I definitely thought we were coming here to get my friend back. Grab my hands. Okay, okay, give me your tiny hands. And repeat after me. Okay. Hogish, logish, crumbus and crawls. Hogish, logish, crumbus and crawls. Again, fortune spirits, put your face in my balls. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> fortune spirit, put your face in my balls. Summon me? How dare you? I'm kidding. Hello. I'm the spirit of a slain hero. Uh, Super, superhero. The hero that all other heroes dream to be. <laughs> As a hero, it's my duty to tell you what I experienced after walking into that horrid gelatinous cube, where I experienced so much pain. At first, I couldn't see, then hear. Once I took a breath of the liquid, it was like a thousand needle pricks until that huge lightning bolt hit me, and that's all I remember. Now I speak to you from the River of Souls. It's so relaxing. Oh, oh right. <laughs> you asked a question. The question that you asked is not relevant. The answer, you should know, is this globe is not the sphere you're looking for. Hmm. No. Goodbye. Got it. Okay, so we don't know where our friend is and this is not the void sphere. That's what I've gathered here. How do you like your fortune so far? <laughs> it, was, it was very cute. <laughs> hmm. Those are uh -oh. good fortunes, honestly. I uh -oh. mean, it's- Uh-oh. I'm bored again. You see a gray streak on this here. <laughs> I don't have the power yet. I need to be entertained. I'm getting Let bleached. me tell you the story <laughs> of yeah. how the great nation Andoran came to be. Oh, wait, I can tell you the end of the urine story. Yeah! Oh, let's That's talk about Andoran. Story. That's, I think that's the story we're talking about right now. Okay, so. What you little not halflings might not know is that Cheliax used to be a much bigger province, but. Those I've heard that one before. <laughs> hey, Anastasia, please tell me about the peace drive. I've never heard this before. Okay, okay. So, there was once a man whose name was Theros Lightsworn. Him? That guy? And I looked right at him. <laughs> I knew it. And he was trespassing on grounds that did not belong to him. Oh, yeah. And he decided to whip it out and take a piss. And me and my friends haven't ever seen this man before. What a jerk. So, she peed all over him and rusted his armor. Oh, man! Ow. 
There are two footnotes I'd like to add to that story. <laughs> One, my armor did not rust because I take excellent care of it. And two, <laughs> while I may have been the recipient of a urination, she was definitely into me. And then we kept him for about 12 hours before he pulled up his pants. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But as I told you in the first story, little Theros did not burn. It is little. That's why he calls it that. So. <laughs> wow, the story gets even better. Star roll D20. For Deanna. Don't roll star. one. <laughs> star. That's an absolutely awesome. a star for Deanna. That's awesome. Hey, Gravis, let me tell you something. It's not the size of your longsword, it's how you use it. 15. 15, wow. You see the color shoot back in this year. A bright yellow. <laughs> that was amazing, Julian. Oh my goodness. I love it. I love it. I hope you have more pee stories after this one. Of course, oh my it was goodness. yellow. <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, I, I feel the power again. Let's do this again. Who wants to grab my hands this time? Julian, do you want to grab my hands? How I'll about, grab your hand. Can, I'll, what yes. If, what if he we throws all do a, it? Let's make it a little bit different this time. He, he pulls out his sack of acorns and throws them all under the uh, crystal balls. Oh, so many innuendos. Julian, grab my hands and repeat after me. You got it. Figgitin, bigotin, Gurmish and Mutts. Figgitin, bigotin, Gurmish and Mutts. Tell us a fortune over these nuts. <laughs> Tell us a fortune over these nuts. <laughs> Summon me again. I detect you are located in the gnome settlement of Brusselwork, currently occupied by the dark forces and our allies. Um, I see in your faces you aren't allies at all, and you are not out to restore the Empire's former glory. Next time, contact a different spirit, unless you leave a sacrifice at least. This guy's really into sacrifices. <laughs> so... Well... I, I guess here's the big question, Grabus. At this point, are your balls empty? No. I think oh, I have well. room for one more. If we hurry up and do this, otherwise you're gonna have to tell me another story. Let's all grab hands and all repeat after me. But first, let me pull out this uh, stick and some cranberries and put them under the crystal balls. You guys okay. ready? Yep. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Ding along dairies, nutmeg and fairies. <laughs> Spew out a fortune on my twig and berries. Spew out a fortune on my twig and berries. Oh, God. That's so good, Brett. Okay. Back again? Oh, they always are. Okay, okay. I know the sphere you seek. It is protected by infernal observers who serve the hells, and their diabolical plans are to use the sphere for destruction. My day to see what would happen if they gained control over it. Could you imagine what would happen if they put that thing inside of a bag of holding? Who knows what would happen then? Just. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Unfortunately for you. All I can tell you is that the sphere exists in a dark place without sound. Below a clearing of woods and between a fork in the river. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe the luck of the halflings will be with you. <laughs> Toodles! She was much more helpful than the other guy. <laughs> and more helpful than the first time. <laughs> wow. Wow, like and you see, and you see the gnome's hair go like, like really like half white. Like, like there's, there's no coming back to get a color right now. Oh no, I'm bleached. <laughs> Julian, I think I'm gonna need some rest. I think you should go out with these adventurers here and uh, go on some journeys or something. I don't know, help them out because uh, uh, I've done all that, I can. You, uh, Julian, you, does you, that spot sound familiar to you? Some place you could take us to? A wooded I'm, area and a fork in the river and. A dark place with no sound? Jean, you have a, a little familiar in the shape of a, a toad that can actually talk. And, and what it does is it comes out of his ha hapsack and it, and it tells you that you can explain this to, to the, the group. But from Brasselwork, you'll need to go north to the edge of the Whispering Woods and cross the River Isle. It, oh, at first it's the land of the Knights of Omez, fighting rogue fiends and attempting to beat back the borders of Cheliax. Then, the Whispering Woods, you will need to be silent because any noises cause attention to the beasts that lurk within, and they will destroy you immediately if you see them or if they hear you. When you get to the river, you'll find duality on his craft, and he can cross you at a modest price. This entity is neutral to all wars and parties. And after you cross, seek the center of the Whispering Woods. 
there you'll be a clearing and a dark structure. So basically, the toad interprets what the crystal ball had said to you. <laughs> wow, that thanks, frog Mr. knows toad. quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he should be leading us. I nominate the frog as our leader now. You know what? I would take the frog as leader too. You know, th this only adds to his disposition as maybe a potential leader for you guys getting into this area. So you may lead Grabus behind with his talents uh, for mm -hmm. the gnome settlement and perhaps venture on if they were to, you know, pay you or do whatever f that excites you to have you go with them. Adventure is always fun for gnomes. Isn't it adventure right, a payment in itself? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no. Uh, Travis, no, you never. take care of your balls, put them on ice, and they were a little warm after this use. I'm going to accompany these folks to, uh, north of the border. I'll come back. I'll be back soon. I promise. You just... There's our outro music. I will show you in our... Great job, you guys. That was amazing. In our compendium, if I can bring it up. But this is Cheliox. And in Cheliox, you guys over here at Brastle Work. By the way, I wanted to tell you earlier, the deep into Brastle Work... Is a great band name. <laughs> yeah. That is an right. excellent yeah. band name. And the Brows to Work. So you're at Brows to Work. I believe this is it. And then he's talking about crossing a river and giving safe pat. There's somebody there that can give you safe passage. You may s go through the Knights of Omez area here. And then there's a evidently some kind of clearing in the forest. But it's called the Whispering Forest for a reason. Because if you're loud, the beasts all know you're there. So good luck to us next episode. I, uh, oh, <laughs> uh, I'm glad you survived the gnome <laughs> settlement of Brassel work. Uh, Jonathan, I thought you might implode. And Ren, you come back uh, holding a few things. What do, what do you come back? You, you're, you, you meet them on the streets and you're like, hey, I just. Hey, I, uh, hi, guys. <laughs> I uh, did you miss me? <laughs> yeah, or something. <laughs> Oh, don't be upset, Anastasia. I just, I had to, I had to go. I told you, you know, I only got a couple things. I look, I got this cool crystal, and I got a potion of healing. What, what Listen, can I we're going to see the Knights of Ozem. I'm very excited. They're my people. But great job, you guys. That that was fun. Like Jean, <laughs> I can't even believe it. I, if we were rolling pixel dice, it couldn't have been better. This is an amazing episode. I cannot wait for the next episode. Everybody, you got to stay tuned because John is going to join us again Yay. next episode. And we'll have Mel back playing Luna, which is going to be fantastic. Yay. And, uh, and although Lightsworn, you did a great job. Tonight we were missing Brooke. And uh, that's because she's having technical difficulties at her house with the internet. Everything's so, better with Mora. 1-800-INTERNET, <laughs> I have a problem, right? <laughs> yeah. Excellent, you guys. This is perfect. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next episode. We're doing Woo! it live. I don't know. We're doing it live. Watch Cheers. your balls, everyone. We're doing it live. Watch Yay! your balls. Elephantitis. <laughs>